You join your host Zishan Nakwi from Ilm News. From time to time, we bring you personalities from all around the country, uh, especially regional uh, personalities, who make the difference uh, within their own particular wards and areas that they uh, work in, respectively. Uh, we're fortunate to have today with us the opposition leader of Sheffield City Council, Councillor Muhammad Shafak. Uh, alongside him is the newly selected candidate for Netheredge Ward in Sheffield, uh, Javed Khan. We'll be talking to them today and uh, asking them uh, their views uh, on political arena and, and um, how their party is panning out uh, from Liberal uh, Democrat. So let's first of all start talking um, uh, with the opposition leader Shafiq Muhammad and uh, first of all welcome him and, uh, and then find out what his party is doing. Shafiq, Assalamu alaikum and welcome Islam. to uh, our show Il News Aapki Awaz. Um, I'm grateful that you found time, uh, you've made time to uh, come and join us. Um, tell us about your um, party. I mean, previously it wasn't doing really well after the general elections. Um, promises that were made by Nick Clegg, especially to students, uh, they weren't delivered. In fact, you took a complete U-turn on them. Um, where do we stand in the upcoming elections in May 2014? I mean, clearly things were difficult, you understand. There's no point denying that in 2010. Um, Actually, as a party, we, we might have got lots of votes, got more votes than we got bef in the 2005 election, but unfortunately, we actually lost seats. So rather than going forward, we actually, in parliamentary terms, went back. It hurt you quite badly, especially in the uh, constitu local constituencies. Yes, so in a sense, we came very good seconds, but unfortunately, in this um, uh, setup we have in the UK, coming second doesn't get you anywhere. No. Actually, it's winning. So what the problem then we had was that the the voters had decided they didn't want Labour, uh, but they didn't necessarily want an outright Conservative government, so they didn't give the Conservatives a majority. So we then were asked to form a government. Now we had a choice, we could either sit back and watch uh, with the economy and all the eyes of the, the world, particularly looking at us, to see what we would do. And what was needed at the time was a strong government. Why did you not difficult. join Labour uh, in a coalition? Because natural coalition I think, I mean, I mean, the issue Labour. was the Labour didn't have the numbers. So it wasn't just a case of working with Labour. Uh, but it was uh, having that made you weaker? Ha having to work with a number of other smaller parties. But actually, I don't think, if you look to the reaction of David Blunkett and others, mm. they weren't interested in forming a government at all. They actually okay. moved away. People like Peter Manson and Gordon Brown wanted to cling on, but actually their party wasn't interested. So that left us with either a minority conservative government, yeah. which the markets would have probably not reacted to more favourably, and then a Liberal Democrat. However, once if you don't win elections, then there was a compound, you know, we could not fulfil our complete manifesto. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, like you mentioned, the issue around student fees was a very contentious issue. I Oh, especially to the yes. to, to two universities in Sheffield. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and it was very dear to the two local It is. I mean, uh, for so long, you know, students have been and, and and obviously quite significantly, Nick Clegg being from uh, yeah. from 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 Sheffield. Yeah, I mean, it was a very difficult uh, issue. I, I mean, Nick's apologised for that. I mean, I wish we could turn them back the clock, but you know, we have to understand how we got here. You know, in '97, Tony Blair and Dovey Blunkett and Co promised not to introduce fees. They did. They then said they won't increase in which they did, and then they set up the Brown Review, which was the review that the government then picked up, the coalition government, in which they proposed unlimited fees. So what we've ended up with is a bit of a compromise. It's not the compromise I particularly like. I'll be pretty honest and frank with you. Yeah. However, we've got to understand, no other party now is proposing to go back. So Labour aren't saying we'll go back to 3,000. They've already said, well, well, we'll probably accept six. We don't know what they'll accept now when they get towards. Okay. But nobody's talking about going back. So we can look back and we look back in disappointment, but actually, should we look forward? And what does the actual fees have done? One of the things that's been missed from uh, all the debate about the controversy about the fees is that actually it's been made slightly more progressive. Mm -hmm. I Basically, uh, what was before was that as soon as anyone started earning £15,000, you started to play a flat rate. No matter mm -hmm. how far... Even for the domestic students, obviously yeah, yeah, you've yeah. had a... Inter internationals uh, continue to pay the fees. So it was UK UK students, and what was happening was, didn't matter if I earned sixteen thousand pounds and Javid earned a uh, hundred thousand pounds, we would pay roughly the same amount. Okay. What's now happened is it's tapered. So basically, what what that means is it goes up. Sorry, it goes up in terms of as soon as you earn twenty one thousand pounds, anything you earn above it, that's there's a, there's a sliding scale. So what's happened is most people who are earning around uh, uh, about thirty forty thousand pounds 
probably paying less than they would have. Obviously, those people that are going to earn over forty, fifty thousand pounds. At the same time, it's also it also hurt the uh, international students as well with, with these kind of policies. Well, the international students were paying. No, the international students were paying their fees anyway. But, but that's hurt the the, the universities, local universities, yeah. and at the same time, uh, the economy of of, of, uh, yeah, of the country. Well, what we've seen is actually there was a slight dip. There's no dispute about that. But if you t speak to Sheffield University, which is in my ward, they'll tell you this year they've got a, a very high number, okay. much higher than what they had last year. So what's happened is it's been a slight dip, and now it's gone back to normal okay. numbers. I mean, people need to understand it's not upfront. Uh, so nobody's been asked to pay any money upfront, but as you start earning, so basically it's like a t time limited graduate tax, but clearly okay. they're not calling it that. Uh, and that was, that was what the students' union were wanting a graduate tax. There's arguments over it. But uh, we are now where we are. I don't think well, any party is going to pledge to reverse the student fees uh, okay. unless I, I hear from anyone. But two of the three main parties are now almost on this. I mean, it's disappointing. We used to have a unique, different policy okay. to the main two. But What's you know, your personal take on Syria's conflict? I mean, um, it's a really difficult one. I mean, at the moment, you know, every night you see pictures from Syria of very horrendous. Because Britain was obviously quite interested. It was on the verge yeah. of uh, voting, it was, it was voting for to say to Syria that there'll be another vote after if. Uh, but I think you know, uh, not just this country, but America and other the Western powers are a bit scarred by what happened in Iraq. Okay. You know, in Iraq we went full hog into that war on the back of WMDs. Uh, at least on this occasion, should you have acknowledged they've got chemical weapons and now they're going through this process of uh, decommissioning them. The problem is that's a very small issue. There's okay. still the issues of the civil war which is not going away and it just, it's just become stalemate. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's turn to, um, to, to our uh, second respected guest who's um, recently been selected um, as a candidate to represent uh, Nadraj Ward from uh, from Liberal Democrat Party, Javed Khan Saab. Javed Khan Saab, uh, first of all, uh, Assalamu alaikum and welcome, and thank you for taking time out to speak to El News. Well, um, what are the issues that you think you will tackle and, and things that matter to the local people of, of that Nadraj Ward? What issues would you bring about and, and what changes could you make if you were to be elected? Right, okay, first of all, thank you for inviting me and giving me opportunities to air my views. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, we were talking about local issues here. Yep. At the moment, we are campaigning uh, against uh, closure of libraries by the Labour Council in Sheffield. Okay. Uh, so far, I think they've closed uh, about 16 libraries uh, in Sheffield. Uh, we've uh, signed the pet petition. Uh, around about twelve to 14,000 uh, people. Well, that's something Sheffield. that Liberal Democrats are also proposing as well. For closure of libraries? Yeah. No, I don't think so. No. no. Not? No, no, no. no, no. Um, we, when we ran the council, didn't close any libraries. Uh, they were all there. What we have said this year when they proposed the budget, that uh, we would actually uh, reverse the cut into libraries. And at the moment, we were campaigning, working hard. In terms of Nether Edge, you know, the, 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 the library service that's been drawn now is both Highfield and Ecclesaw are, are not earmarked for closure, mm -hmm. but within the middle of the ward, a lot of people use a mobile library service, a lot of, particularly the children, around Merchant Bank, etc. Um, that was one of the busiest stops we had. Um, the issue now will be those children will not be able to go and get the books from the mobile service, they will have to make their way down um, to the other libraries. So, uh, turning back to Javed again, <coughs> what differences will you make to your ward? Um, um, what problems are you faced with, or, or the local public, do, do they approach you with? Well, I think it's <coughs> the local issues, I mean, uh, uh, such as uh, a mobile library at the moment is in my ward, and that's under threat. Mm -hmm. So, th these, you know, uh, these kind of issues that uh, I will uh, stand in the front line <coughs> and do the petition. Mm -hmm and get all the groups together <coughs> and campaign <coughs> on, the, on, on these issues. Uh, I mean, there's a, a bin collection uh, used to be a weekly under Lib Dems, but since the Labour Council took over, they've decided to uh, provide that save with us fortnightly. Okay. Uh, with the large families, uh, you know, the, the rubbish is there and, uh, you know, it's health and uh, hygiene uh, because it's, it's so smelly and so so dirty there that, that flies and everything is there so I mean we're saying that uh, that they shouldn't be doing that 
uh, uh, they should have made that decision to uh, fortnightly and uh, also they've uh, <coughs> decided to uh, close down uh, uh, <coughs> Recycling. Uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, the Dovali Stadium, <coughs> uh, so which uh, the, this, uh, they've invested a lot of money into Dovali Stadium in 1991 when they opened it, and now uh, they decided what, what to. What was the Democrats? Uh, what was your party proposing to do with with the uh, with Don Valley? Uh, well, uh, at this present time, we want to keep it as open and you know just uh, leave it as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, as 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 leave it what it is. I mean, uh, if you want, f I mean, further details on that, I mean, Shafak is here. He can yeah. uh, tell you about that. That was the recent uh, uh, development on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, viewers, uh, we'll take a short break and uh, we'll come and join you uh, straight after the break.